So we are celebrating 50 years of uh, Kishore Bharti. Anil says we should say we are observing or celebrating. <coughs> but when it is celebration or observation, 50 years you would agree is a substantial period in the history of an institution which carried a major experiment in post independent India. During freedom struggle, of course, uh, starting with Savitri Bhai, Gandhi, Tagore, Kiju Bhai, there were experiments. But in post independent India, I think Kishore Bharati has been one of the significant uh, experiments in the field of education as to how science education should be organized, particularly for the grassroots level uh, students. And later, Vekalagya was an experiment drawing its inspiration from Gandhian basic education. Although it's the Anil who will give you a graphic description of Kishore Bharati and Eklavya. I must say that uh, I am an accidental president of Kishore Bharati, like accidental prime minister. But uh, it was the unanimous choice of the Kishore Bharati that I should be the chairman. Although my own association with Kishore Bharati has not been substantial enough to qualify myself to be chairman and also to be among you. But still given the importance of education and having been a part of education movement in my part of state, uh, combined state of Andhra Pradesh, later Telangana, where we have a same education committee working for the last 40, 45 years. <clears throat> now as far as Kishore Bharati is concerned, the central concern of the organization was how to teach science to the rural children. And perhaps the importance of teaching science is never was more important than now, when the whole climate in the country is uh, <clears throat> not very favorable to scientific temper, scientific attitude, scientific inquiry, pushing knowledge forward. I don't think the climate, for some reason or the other, since I teach political science, I don't want to get into that part because it's very sensitive and I'm speaking in an organization where I have to be very careful, uh, otherwise I can be much more frank. But certainly, a scientific attitude in the society, particularly in the 21st century, is the precondition for the advancement of the society. Scientific attitude, scientific inquiry are extremely important if a nation has to develop. And Kishore Bharati was trying to lay the foundation, pave the way for independent India to build a scientific temper in the rural area so that what we today talk of uh, growth and GDP and all that, unless the rural masses, rural population practices agriculture, which you know Eklavya tried to do, and upgrade the skills in the rural India. This is what happened in every developed country. Now what we call a developed country, they upgraded the skills, upgraded the education, there was a mass education, and then only those nations have progressed. But given the long history of culture, tradition, beliefs, uh, certainly, you know, teaching science to the young children and how to look at the world, how to understand the world, how to make sense out of the world, how to understand from their own experience what they see in the villages, relating their own experience to the larger environment. I think these are some of the, you know, important fundamental questions that uh, are very important for the society 
to advance. But I think uh, that has not happened. Both Hosangabad experiment and Eklavya experiment, I am not perhaps the right person. Anil is around and Anil will give a graphic description because he is a founder member of Anil. Although Anil may personally not uh, like me to say, but he was one of the founder members of Kishore Bharati. I think all the friends sitting here would know that he got his doctorate from California uh, University and uh, he, was a, he worked with a Nobel laureate. He was a doctorate in molecular biology and came back, joined Tata Institute of Fundamental Research. And I must also compliment Tata Institute of Fundamental Research for this initial enthusiasm. And when Anil su suggested an experiment of this kind in Hushangabad, there was a lot of support and encouragement from TAFR. TAFR has done enormous service <coughs> in this country. So, although it was a private initiative, too, I would not call it because I was also in Tata Institute of Social Science for some time as a national fellow. It's, a, it's, a, it's an institution which had a national interest, national interest in larger sense. It had a national interest. But the private initiative now is completely contrast to what Tata's were imagining, what Tata's were dreaming at that particular point of time. Now that therefore Hushangabad experiment, Anil will explain, then of course the experiment of Ekalavya in 1980s, but the political economy, the larger political context has changed. It has not changed for better. I am making this point very specifically, it has not changed for better. But today we met in order to celebrate now, given the context, it is a celebration to record our experiences, to reflect on what's happening, to see if such an experimentation is possible at our own level, whether we can give ideas to the society wherever society is willing to experiment, institutions are willing to experiment. I think that's the purpose of this conference, that we call people with very rich experience in field of education. There are people from history, from science, from you know, philosophy, uh, from architecture, from different walks of life, who have done enormous creative work in their own respective fields. If such minds join together and collectively reflect and resonate on what is happening, I am sure that something will come out of this experience which we can record, if we can experiment, experiment, but we owe something to the posterity. So we thought that uh, Kishore Bharti should, you know, I mean, uh, record its experience, number one, and also share with the friends and the reflections on the contemporary educational, you know, scenario, and pass on to the younger generation to see that if the younger generation can take it forward. I will only make one last comment, that today, the education, I taught for 55 years. I mean, when I look back, one, my friend Vaivari who was the Reserve Bank Governor, when he retired, oh, there was an interview. So the journalist asked, do you think that you were in Reserve Bank at the right time? He said, no, I am out at the right time. And some of us also feel that we are out at our formal education system at the right time. I we don't know how suffocated we should have felt because we enjoy full freedom. I don't think in my 50 years of experience of teaching, I ever felt constrained in the classroom. I have experimented with number of courses, not one course. But today, if I go back to the university system, I think the entire climate has changed. There is some fear that has seized the academics. There is a lot of fear in the institutions. The attack on education is three-pronged. It is from market, from state, and from religion. And all three of them have now waged a war literally against the education system or on the education system. And education, all experiments that have been made, fought against religion, religious I mean, superstitious belief, not religion as a spiritual belief system, that's a difference, it's a person back. But religion as a, as a superstitious belief system without evidence, what science 
has been done. Science and religion had a great conflict in Europe. Most of you know that there was a number of scientists. Bruno was burnt alive. Kelly Copernicus, all of them had to fight major battles with the religious belief systems. So religion as a spiritual belief is something different, but religion as a, as a way of understanding the world, I think these two things are different. Market. We always thought that you know, the human mind should be left free and if the knowledge is produced, the market can use. But market asking, you know, education system, the autonomy of university came partly as an autonomy from market. We are accountable to society and people and the advancement of society, not accountable to market, not to the state. That's the reason why universities are created by, created by an act of parliament, not by the executive. The idea is that the academics should be free. But today, there is an attack on that autonomy which was very valuable for all of us. So state is attacking, religion is attacking, and market is attacking. How do we face these forces or how do we encounter these forces? I think is the greatest challenge that all of us are facing at this critical point of time in the history of our nation. How do we go forward, I think is left to the Distinguish a gathering, apply your mind, summarize your experiences, and collectively let us put our minds and see that if we can help the education system, what Savitri Bhai Phule has done, she took a lot of risk. What scientists have done, sacrificed their life. What Vijuba has done, yes, in his own way, Gandhi himself thought Tagore has made an experiment. But today, making an experiment of even like Hushangabad. And I must say that Hushangabad experiment was possible because Haksar was there. It all certain that he has certain, you know, notion of nation or notion of, you know, progress. There was a B.D. Sharma, there was Ashok Vajpai, Arun will, I mean, Anil will say that these are the people stood by the experiment. And yesterday Anil was telling that one district education officer, district education officer, a small officer, allowed 100 or 300 schools to be experimented under Hushangabad science teaching program. Is it possible now? They have not informed minister, the director of you know, public instruction, B.D. Sharma, a legendary as I had the opportunity of working with him. Very, you know, I mean, he was living in a slum after retirement, in a slum. But these type of IS officers, you know, today is a, is a, is a missing, you know, it's a completely missing lot. Because when I interact with these young IS people, some of my own students join the service, nothing to be expected from them. But an ABD Sharma, a Shorp Vajpai, a Haksa, a Anil Sarkopal, I think that those context was different. How this nation will have, you know, this um, stand by some of those values, carry those values forward, create a nation which is humane, participatory, democratic, egalitarian. I think this is the vision of education. Now, finally, what is education has to be done? Production knowledge. Knowledge for what? We have seen in the COVID period, lakhs of rupees were spent. See, that knowledge should be available to people. That's not the function of knowledge. But definitely one thing is true, that knowledge is a function of freedom, and today, attack is on freedom. I think it is in this context we are meeting and definitely we are meeting at very challenging times. Kishore Bharti thought as a part of its celebration, we should invite all of you and interact and see that collectively we apply our mind and see that what is that we can do, what is that we can negotiate with it. Is there any possibility, what are the possibilities to explore those possibilities we have met here. Once again I have great pleasure inviting all of you who have made it possible. Even those whom invited could not make, we definitely will again try to contact them and try to see, collect ideas. And definitely we promise that whatever ideas you put forward, they will be recorded and they will be passed on to the larger society for a clear to and critical debate. Thank you very much for coming to this session. Sir. Yeah.